Many commandlets are capable of continuing to execute when certain types of errors occur. For example, consider a commandlet that attempts to contact three servers, Server 1, Server 2, and Server 3. Suppose that Server 2 is temporarily offline when this command is run. The commandlet will be successful in contacting Server 1, but Server 2 will fail. This is a non-terminating error. The commandlet can't perform its action for Server 2, but that doesn't stop it from moving on to try the next server, Server 3. These errors are referred to as exceptions in Windows PowerShell, and they occur whenever something goes wrong. A terminating exception forces the shell to stop what it is doing, while other exceptions are less severe and are called non-terminating errors, or exceptions. When a commandlet encounters a non-terminating error, it checks to see what it should do about it. The non-terminating error action is contained in a built-in shell variable called error action preference. There are four possible values for this variable. Continue is the default and instructs the commandlet to display an error message and continue executing. Stop tells the commandlet to turn the non-terminating error into a terminating exception, meaning the commandlet stops execution entirely. Silently continue instructs the commandlet to continue executing without displaying an error message. Inquire tells the commandlet to interactively prompt the user for an action, enabling the user to select either continue or stop. Remember that these apply only to the non-terminating errors that a commandlet might encounter. Some commandlets can encounter terminating exceptions, and when that happens, they will always stop running immediately, regardless of how error action preference is set. Let's check the value of error action preference. By default, it is set to continue. Now let's run a command that attempts to access a file that does not exist, and one that does. As you can see, an error message is displayed, but the command does not terminate. It continues and is able to access the second file, which does exist. This is what the continue behavior means. If a non-terminating exception occurs, continue. We'll change error action preference to silently continue. Now we'll run that command again. As you can see, it still continued past the file that does not exist, but it didn't display an error message. It continued, but did so silently. Now let's change the error action preference to stop. When we run the command this time, it ceases operation as soon as the non-terminating exception occurs. In other words, we've changed the non-terminating exception into a terminating one. In general, error messages are a good thing. The shell typically produces informative, clear error messages that, if you read them carefully, tell you what's going wrong and give you clues toward finding a fix for the problem. You do not, generally speaking, want to globally suppress all error messages. Yet that is what you're doing if you just set error action preference to silently continue, suppressing all error messages, even ones you may not have anticipated. Administrators who do this typically do so because they have a commandlet, such as get WMI object, that they anticipate producing an error, and they simply want to suppress the error message and allow the commandlet to continue executing. But adding the above setting to a script suppresses all errors for the entire script. In many cases, the script will run into other problems that the administrators would want to know about, but because they have suppressed all error messages, no errors will be displayed. The result is a script that does not run as intended, and the administrator spends a great deal of time attempting to debug the script simply because the shell is unable to provide useful clues about what the problem is. There are very few instances where you would want to suppress all error messages from an entire script. Instead, you commonly want to suppress the errors from a single commandlet, and you can do so. All Windows PowerShell commandlets support a set of common parameters which are actually handled directly by the shell and do not need to be specifically written by the commandlet's developer. These parameters are not listed in each commandlet's help file. Rather, you'll see the commandlet's help file simply include common parameters at the end of the commandlet's parameter list. One of the common parameters is error action, which has the global parameter alias EA. This parameter accepts the same four possible values as error action preference. However, Rather than globally controlling the error action, the parameter controls the error action for a single commandlet. So if you have a commandlet, 
such as get WMI object, and you anticipate it causing errors, you can suppress the non-terminating errors for just that commandlet by specifying error action, or EA. When you specify an error action for a commandlet, that overrides the error action preference behavior for that one commandlet. We're setting the error action preference back to its default of continue. Now let's run our command again. We're back to the original behavior, where it displays an error but continues trying to execute the remainder of the command. Let's run it again, this time specifying a dash EA stop parameter. This time, even though the global error action preference is set to continue, our command stops with a terminating exception. So we've overridden the default behavior for this one commandlet. Keep in mind that in order to trap an error, the commandlet must produce a terminating exception, not just an error message. You can only trap terminating exceptions, which means you'll have to either set error action preference to stop, or use dash EA stop on the commandlets that you anticipate an error from. Windows PowerShell 1 included a trap construct, which could be used to trap exceptions. Version 2 introduces an additional error handling construct called try-catch. A try-catch construct is more granular than a trap construct and can be easier to use. A typical construct might look like the one shown here. Notice that the getWMI object commandlet is being run with the EA stop parameter forcing it to produce terminating exceptions when it runs into an error situation. The try block defines the commands that you think might cause an error and for which you have specified an error action of stop. If an exception occurs, the code inside the catch block is executed. After the code inside the catch block finishes, execution will resume with whatever code follows the try catch construct. The code within the finally block will execute whether an exception occurred or not. You might use this block to close a database connection, for example, to ensure that the connection is closed whether an exception occurred or not. The finally block is optional. You don't need to specify it if you don't have any reason to do so. Here's a script that anticipates an error. You can see that this getWMI object command has been set to produce a terminating error when an error occurs, and it is enclosed in a try-catch block. You'll notice that this is all contained within a function that expects computer names as pipeline input. And here's where that function is being called. And it is being passed more than one computer name, at least one of which isn't actually on the network. The error handling will simply log the computer name to a file, giving us a list of failed computers. Running this script, you can see that it does take some time for WMI to figure out that a computer isn't on the network. Once it does, it generates an exception and executes the trap handler. That should be logging the computer name to a file. Once the entire script is finished running, we can examine the contents of that file and see that the failed computer names do, in fact, appear in the file. Back in the script, you'll notice that the script starts by attempting to delete that log file each time we run the script. It's possible that the file won't exist at this point, so the delete command might return an error. We're suppressing that by specifying the silently continue error action for just that commandlet. It's okay to suppress specific errors for specific commandlets if you want. It's just not a good idea to do so globally. For example, what we've done here would also suppress errors about us not having permission to delete the file. That's not necessarily an error we want to suppress. But for the conditions in which we would be using the script, we may decide that it's easier and causes no harm if that kind of error occurs and we don't see it. Within a trap or try construct, you may have need to access the exception that caused the construct to execute. There are two ways to do so. A built-in error variable contains the errors that have occurred in the shell. Error 0 is the most recent error. Error 1, the next most recent, and so on. You can also use another common parameter, error variable, or ev, to capture the exception generated by that commandlet into a variable. Notice how error1 does not include a dollar sign when named in the ev parameter. Because you are just specifying the variable's name at that point, and the dollar sign is not technically a part of the name. Later, when you actually use the variable, 
The dollar sign precedes the name to inform the shell that you are referencing a variable name. Let's run a command again and specify that the error be captured to a variable. After the command runs and the error occurs, we can access that variable to get details on the error that happened. A script could also use this information to take a different action depending on the exact error that actually occurred. 